Hey, hey, I'm Harry Sue, Pitmaster of Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. Welcome to my uh, Facebook Live post. In case uh, you don't know who I am, I'm a competitor. Uh, I do barbecue classes, uh, I do some sauce and uh, rubs, and I do barbecue events around the US and abroad. Uh, you probably have not heard, but I've won a few grand championships, a couple of dozen, 100 plus first places. And uh, if you Google Harry Sue uh, or Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, you'll learn much about more what I do. So here's what we're gonna do. For the next hour or so, I'm gonna show you how to cook a steak perfectly and show you my Harry's X Flip to get perfect grill marks on your steak. Today I'm a guest of the Facebook group Backyard Smokers Barbecue, and be sure to like them. Uh, on top of the steak, I'm also gonna show you guys how to cook and eat ribs my way. No, it's not the way you think. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And, uh, we're gonna also handle some uh, giveaways and I'm gonna be answering your questions while I'm cooking. So we're gonna cook, talk, <laughs> answer questions and have a lot of fun, all right? And uh, if you stay tuned, uh, Wes uh, Phillips from the admin group for uh, Barbecue Smokers is gonna give you guys uh, some giveaways. And let me start up my pit and I'll let you guys say welcome and then chime in with questions as I cook a meal right in front of you, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna try to hold the camera I'm gonna try to cook and uh, we'll see how, how this thing goes. So let me turn it around here and show you what we're gonna do here. All right, so uh, what do I have here? Today I felt like cooking some uh, ribeye and I'm gonna show you guys how to do an X flip. Uh, let's see here, we got some uh, baby bag ribs. I'm gonna show you guys how we cook it uh, my way, which is basically grill with a rub. We got some uh, flavored oil. Uh, some vegetables, gotta have your veggies, uh, and uh, cilantro, lime, some pico de gallo we just made. I uh, got a platter here, and this is the device we're gonna cook the meal on. This is a Diamond King smoker for my buddy Patrick King, and it's basically a steel box that you put in your pit, and you burn wood, and it generates a wonderful smoke and runs about 300 degrees for about three, four hours on uh, just a few chunks of wood. Uh, we're gonna try to use some of my seasonings, and um, I have a little bag, bag set up here. I'm gonna test drive uh, a uh, Weber kettle. This is the uh, nice copper model. So here's the, uh, let's see, here's the uh, Diamond King box like that. And I've got some wood in it. And um, Patrick provides uh, these starters when he uh, sells you the uh, box here. Uh, we're gonna give one away. These are retail about $75. So I'm gonna light it up. And once the fire gets going, we're gonna take questions and uh, say hi to everybody and tell you guys what we're trying to do today. So it's really easy to light. And uh, what's going, I'm gonna put a piece on top here, like so. Another piece here. So you're watching a live cooking demo. Ow! <laughs> it's not good to burn yourself on camera. There we go. All right, let's see if this one works. Okay, this one's still burning. All right, so I'm gonna put a lid on. Okay, so while the pit starts up, I'm gonna go uh, say welcome to you guys and uh, take some questions. Oh, I'm also gonna see your steak, so let me tell you this little gizmo I always use. This is uh, the uh, grill grate by uh, Brad, and uh, this is a indispensable tool. If you're cooking steaks like we are gonna do today, like this beautiful ribeye here, you, you definitely need to get one of these. They come in pieces uh, kind of like this, and you can buy as many pieces as you need. Uh, we'll let it start up. I'll leave, I'll leave the lid open here. It might get a little smoky, but we'll make it work. All right, let's see here. Let me switch back to this view. It's a little bit of the backyard. It's a beautiful, gorgeous day in SoCal. All right, I'm back again. So uh, thank you all for coming to uh, my little uh, afternoon, Sunday afternoon cook-off. It's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. We're gonna play with fire, meat, and smoke. So I wanna go say hi to everybody. Hello, Reich from KC, Missouri. Philip Zambola, Matt Armstrong from Rainy, Illinois. Sorry, Matt, but it's, it's nice and sunny out here. So let me, let me give you a quick aerial view. So hate to show this to you, but this is uh, sunny SoCal, uh, beautiful day. And uh, it's all good. So we're out here cooking in the backyard and having just a lot of fun. Uh, more, more hellos from Minnesota. Jeremy Grimm, Ohio. Ray George from Houston, Arkansas. Art from Kansas. 
Tyrone Vegas, Tim from Chatsworth. Hey, Chatsworth, California guy. Oh, Jason, aloha from Hawaii. All right, my favorite place. Aloha, brother. All right. Sean, Sirene St. Louis. Oh, sorry. It's, it's uh, got to hang with the rain here. So, John, I am your, you're in Cali. John Card, I am uh, right now in Alameda Island uh, in NorCal uh, in a beautiful backyard. Hi to James, South Carolina. Guy, ciao chilla. All right. We have Tennessee. Everybody's checking in, Wisconsin. So anyway, I, I am ready to answer your question. So while the uh, pit is heating up, I'll show you what's going on here. So the uh, pit is getting nice and warm. Yep, it's getting heating up. So it will take about maybe 10, 20 minutes to start up. And uh, while it's starting up, and I have you guys on my uh, phone here, let, let, let's season up some, some meat here. Uh, while we do that, I, I want to give the meat a little chance to get a little bit of a brine in it. Let the salt solution penetrate a bit. So um, let's, let's do the steak first. So steak, I'm going to use a bit of my um, moolah rub here. And uh, it's uh, got a bit nice, nice bit of uh, salt, some secret ingredients like shiitake mushrooms. I'm going to put it on here. I hope you can see this. It's a nice medium even coat. Uh, that's the beef rub. Uh, now we're going to put the chicken rub on the uh, meat side. Uh, a lot of teams are telling me that they get, they're taking walks using the uh, chicken rub on uh, the, the meat side and then using the uh, all-purpose on the uh, bone side. So we're going to give it a coat here. All right, I'm going to grab my glove. Give it a pat down. Give it a flip. And I probably should wear the glove. And one second here. Okay, here we go. Flip it over. So what I like to do is I get the uh, chicken rub on one side and then get the uh, all-purpose on the other side. It seems to work really, really well. Now I flip it to the other side. Now I got the uh, all-purpose rub here uh, on, on the other side, on the back side of the rib. So you put a nice medium coat on, uh, just enough to make the meat below become opaque and uh, this is a uh, gives a good flavor now what I do is I actually grill my ribs single bone at a time I don't uh, you know always enjoy cooking ribs the five hour way but uh, for what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna show you guys how I make my favorite rib which is kind of like churrascaria style I just grill it on a pit smoke it a little bit and uh, then I will uh, serve it with some pico de gallo and a squeeze of lemon We'll grill up some vegetables, do a steak today, and it's gonna be a great Sunday dinner. All right. Get the steak on. That is a beautiful ribeye right there. Okay, so you notice that the uh, King Diamond King smoker box is beginning to smoke. And uh, we should be able to get it up to temp. I uh, reckon it's gonna go to about maybe 250, 300 degrees. Put the lid on and put the, the uh, lid vent on the opposite end of where the smoker box will be. So hopefully, I, hopefully you guys can see this and we'll let it cook for a little bit while I take your question. So, hey, it only took seven minutes to uh, get the meat on and uh, I'm back. So um, let, me, let me get the questions here. Just, let me scroll back a little bit here. All right, so first question is, why are you pre-cutting your ribs? So what happens is when you cook barbecue and you grill your meats, it's a lot faster and a lot easier if you can grill your, your ribs single bone. And what happens is uh, it gives it a great flavor and you can cook the whole meal in about 35, 40 minutes. So we're gonna smoke, we're gonna smoke it about um, 30 minutes or so and then just go ahead and uh, char it, uh, get some flavored uh, oil. We're gonna use uh, some homemade shallot oil that I make myself. You get uh, some uh, oil and you cook shallots in it for about say 45 minutes and you drain off the oil. This oil is absolutely flavorful and really great for all kinds of cooking. All right, next question is, uh, are there any preservatives in your rub? No, there are no preservatives. My rub is uh, manufactured by my partner, David Sievers uh, from uh, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, when he met me about nine years ago, uh, he called me on the phone and said, hey, Harry, you don't know who I am, but I so happen to own a rub company. And I noticed you are on a TV show called uh, Barbecue Pitmasters. 
and I'm a big fan of yours. Would you like to sell some rubs? I said, hey, why not? Uh, my current uh, rub revenue is zero. So <laughs> anything better than zero is good. So we uh, signed a little pa a partnership deal and he makes my rub out of Cleveland, Ohio. And in the very first month of sales in 2008, uh, we sold a thousand dollars worth of rub. So I was completely blown away by the number of people out there who are really hu in hungry for a good barbecue seasoning. Because I always tell people, uh, the number one most important item in your barbecue portfolio is the quality of your meat. The second most impi important item is your seasoning. So make sure you guys, you don't get good seasonings. And once you have good meat and good seasoning, you are on a road to barbecue nirvana. Okay, next question. Are there any preservatives in your wrap? No preservatives at all whatsoever. Uh, let's see, tips and tricks. Love watching you on TV. That's great. Does your... Uh, Kelly asks, uh, Kelly Hardesty asks, does your rub contain MSG? No, it does not contain MSG uh, because of allergy concerns. Uh, for those of you who are not aware what MSG is, MSG is a flavor enhancer. So if you ever had um, a cheeseburger and you had a cheese dripping on the side, uh, you had a wonderful flavor. If you ever had uh, spaghetti sauce and get some of the marinara sauce in it, you ever have soy sauce, uh, all that is basically MSG. So. Um, the fact that I'm talking to you right now and you can understand what I'm saying is because MSG is working in your brain. So MSG is manufactured by the human body and it's a potent neurotransmitter and uh, you actually might manufacture quite a lot, like two, two kilos of MSG a day. So the MSG was discovered by Professor Ikeda out of the University of Tokyo back in the 1900s and he found out that it provided great flavor because the Japanese have been using seaweed in their cooking for many thousands of years. When you go there and have Japanese food and you wonder, what's that green stuff floating in your soup? Well, that's actually seaweed, and the seaweed has a naturally occurring form of MSG, which stands for monium sodium glutamate. It's actually an amino acid, and amino acids make up all the protein and life forms on Earth. So hopefully that's a long-winded answer, but you know, if you want to ask more about MSG, I can definitely tell you more. Uh, there's a lot of misconception about MSG, how it basically causes allergies. If you're allergic to MSG, you're probably allergic also to seafood because seafood contains a lot of uh, monosodium glutamate or glutamic acid actually, because the ocean creatures use it as a buffer against the salt uh, entering their body. So if you need more information about MSG, let me know. I'll, I'll kind of tell you more. Let me move on here. What's my favorite wood? Jeremy Naper. Uh, Jeremy, uh, I actually, it's like asking me what's my favorite child. <laughs> I uh, like uh, hickory and apple when I cook brisket and butt. Uh, I enjoy uh, using cherry on ribs. Uh, I've been playing around with pecan more recently. And uh, wood is a very personal choice. Uh, and different woods actually from different parts of the country have different flavors. So for example, the, uh, the oak uh, in, in Austin and say the oak we find in California are kind of just from the same family. For example, like in uh, California, we cook using live coastal oak when we do tri-tip. And uh, the oak here is very different than say the oak I would find in Austin. But uh, my favorite woods, I, I would say on the top three list would be uh, hickory, apple, followed by uh, cherry, all right? Uh, let's see here, Dubstown Smokers asks, do you pre-cut in comps? Uh, if you're talking about trimming meat at home, the answer is yes. Um, when I was, was in my heyday, I would do about say, I don't know, 30 to 40 contests a year. And I, I do work a full-time job uh, as an IT manager in downtown LA. So what I do is I pre-cut my meats uh, because a lot of times I end up flying to a site. So I've uh, figured out how to cram all my meats uh, cut and frozen, put into a luggage bag, uh, 49.5 pounds and check it into Southwest. And I can fly into any city, get my rental car, go to Walmart, pick up all my supplies and go cook a contest and hopefully take home a check. So hopefully that answers your question about pre-cut comps. Uh, I will answer a question I'm always asked is that when I want first in KCBS USA chicken, what kind of chicken did I use? Yes, I did freeze my chicken. So, uh, you know, I, whatever people say out there, uh, you can take it from me. Uh, I've won using frozen meats. And, um, you know, I've got about 27 grand championships, 100 plus first places. So those techniques do work. Uh, so try, try them and let me know if you have questions. All right, here we go. A total newbie, Christine, Christine Johnson here. What type of wood? Okay, uh, hickory, apple, and cherry. My favorite. Mike Deaton, say thanks for sharing. Alex asks, hey, do you ever use a reverse flow? Yes, I have used a Langpit. I, I really like it. Uh, and it's got a completely different cook profile. 
a reverse flow pit basically has the firebox on one end and then the smoke and hot air goes underneath the pit it goes or makes a u-turn at the end of the pit on the other side and then comes out the other side it's typically done on sort of a propane uh, torpedo shaped pit uh, so on a reverse flow you will not find that on a weber well, talking about a weber i'm going to turn the camera show you guys it's starting up nicely and uh it's starting to smoke very nicely now it's one of the things i really like about uh, the diamond king smoker it's been 13 minutes now since it started look at that isn't that gorgeous see the smoking the uh, grill is heating up I'm getting beautiful beautiful smoke right there All right All right nice and hot it's probably around like 250 now um don't don't trust this gauge it doesn't work so follow your finger look at my hand right i'm touching it so if follow Harry's half second rule. If you can touch your pit about a half second or so, it's about 250-ish. If it's a quarter second, it's about 300, 350. And if you burn your hand, it's way too hot for cooking. So that's pretty much my, my tip on how to check your pit. I, uh, I, uh, I just saved you, uh, what, $80? <laughs> you don't have to buy, uh, you don't have to buy expensive thermometer. Even though, you know, I, I have one of these puppies. Uh, this this one is a thermopen. Uh, this has my logo on it, uh, and I was uh, able to get a free one from uh, the the uh, manufacturer in uh, England, which I uh, taught classes. So if you want to hear the story, uh, let me know. I'll tell you the story about London. All right. Next question is, how do you come with the name Slap Your Daddy Barbecue? All right. So I am a totally an accidental pit master. I have no credential sitting here telling you how to cook barbecue because by day I'm an IT manager. Um, what I do is I build data centers. And uh, in 2008, there was a movie called The Bucket List. And uh, my coworker came to work and said, Harry, we are a bunch of IT nerds. We should do something with our life before we kick the bucket. And uh, Terry was her name. She told us that we should all make a bucket list. And uh, in order to make it interesting, we decided to write stretch goals for each other. So they wrote a stretch goal for me. Actually, well, there were two stretch goals. The first one was to cook a barbecue contest, like the one you see on TV. The second was actually to go and do stand-up comedy and uh, take a stand-up comedy class. And that would absolutely terrify me. So I finished my first goal by being a backup singer and dancer for a company talent contest. Uh, and I did not know it, but one of my coworkers surreptitiously videotaped the damn thing. And now it's on YouTube. So if you go to my website, slapyourdaddybbq.com or keenharrysue.com, you'll find that video in the about page and you can have a good laugh of me being one of the Gladys Knights and the Pips dancers with an afro, dark glasses and a tie. So uh, I went into barbecue by accident because I was only going to cook one contest because my, my co-workers wrote uh, compete in a barbecue contest as a stretch goal. And uh, lo and behold, when I was trying to come up with a team name, I, I named my team Bucket List because it will be a one-time throwaway name. Um, they said that was boring. <laughs> so they said, hey, let's pick a name for your team. And I didn't care because I was just gonna use it one time. And they said, hey, call it something fun. If you're from the South, apparently, when you're from the South and you eat something you really, really like, it's so good you want to slap somebody. So since I'm a daddy, I said, why don't I call the team Slap Your Daddy? And that, the name stuck. Since it was a one-time throwaway name, I never imagined I would ever use it again. But you know, that's it. Uh, that's this history. I went to my very first contest. I won reserve champion at first in chicken. And since then, I've traveled around the country and around the world for the past, what, nine years now, having a great time, meeting great people, and just enjoying the camaraderie, the community, and the DNA of barbecue. That's why I'm here talking to you, because I really want to kind of get you guys on board and answer your questions and take you through those little humps and little uh, kind of uh, downturns in your barbecue journey. All right. Let's see here. John Rolona says, uh, thank you for being with us. I was on your QA and a lot. Yes, I was on a, the virtual Weber Bullet. Give a plug for my buddy Chris Ellingheim. And uh, when I got on in five days, I answered, I don't know, maybe two, three hundred questions. Uh, it was exhausting, but uh, I did my best. And for five days, I kept up the pace. At the end of that whole effort, I think I set the record for the most number of questions and answers given. Uh, so much so that some uh, of the readership went out and actually wrote a book, uh, The Wisdom of Harry Sue. So if you go in PDF, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, do a search on Harry Sue's, uh, uh, what do you call, instruction manual, You'll find that body of knowledge that somebody actually went and read all the answers to the 300 questions and consolidated into a little e-book. So go, go, go find out and, and you know, you're going to have a lot of fun. All right, Mike Waterman says, what do you like better, green wood or dry wood? Okay, so let's talk about wood for a second. So wood is a very specialized component within barbecue. It's vitally important that you have good wood. Now, what I mean by that is that the quality of the wood, the dryness is extremely important. So here's a few tips. Number one, you have to understand that wood has a resin. It is evaporated 
preparation of the resin that creates the magic of barbecue. So for example, a cherry wood would have a different say resin than, uh, than a hickory and that would be a different resin than pecan. Uh, if you want to Google it, uh, it's actually called lignin, L-I-G-N-I-N, one of the most complex organic matters on earth. So you basically want to make sure that you're good wood. Uh, I prefer no bark, that's my style because the lignin in the bark sometimes is unpredictable. I also prefer my wood dried. So it's about 11% uh, moisture. If you want to buy a moisture meter, go to Amazon, buy a moisture meter for 15 bucks, check your wood. Uh, the, the wood that's nicely dried is about maybe 10 to 12% wood. I, I prefer not to use green wood, uh, but some people swear by it and you know, more power to you if you're winning on, on green wood. All right, next one here is uh, what type of rub injection would you recommend for whole hog? Uh, I uh, use uh, my uh, uh, all-purpose rub uh, on pork uh, a lot of times. Uh, it was good for, I believe, uh, a couple of years, few years ago, I won third overall KCBS pork. So that's not bad for a Western, uh, West Coast team, uh, considering there's seven, six, seven thousand professional teams in the country. Um, uh, folks in the West in the past uh, have not been known well for cooking hog, but more recently, like my buddy uh, Sterling Ball, he, he won first place pork uh, in the KCBS ranking. So I would recommend like a sweet rub. Uh, and uh, I would recommend basically apple-based injections. Now, um, people always ask, uh, when you do an injection for hog, do you use some of the commercially available, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, injection powders? Yes, for competition, uh, I do. Uh, and I use uh, the, the usual ones out there, Cosmos and uh, Butcher uh, and a few others, all right? Okay, James Davila. Uh, flavor profile, some other traditional areas, Tennessee, Texas, Carolina. Okay, so flavor profile is, um, <laughs> Three hour argument, all right? So there are many, many thoughts on flavor profiles. Hang on a second, let me, let me look at my pit here. There are many, many kinds of flavor profiles from all around the country. And now, uh, oh, hang on a second here. Let me get a little make a adjustment here. Needs a little bit more up. So it's important to watch your meat when you're seasoning it. Uh, you want to make sure that. The meat's properly seasoned. So if it needs more seasoning, don't hesitate to break away, even though you're talking on Facebook Live, just to uh, go ahead and season it. All right, so uh, paleo profiles are a source of contention and discussion and controversy, and there are many, many quote unquote experts out there, right? So I'm not an expert. So what I do is I cook to win. And what is more important is when, if you talk about flavor profiles, certain parts of the country have certain styles of barbecue that's good for what I call backyard and maybe a restaurant style. But if you're talking flavor profiles for restaurant and backyard cooking and cooking for friends, obviously you, ha you have certain things like say the North Carolina style mustard, uh, what do you call uh, tomato and, and, and vinegar based. You got a Memphis style uh, rubs, which may be just dry rub with no sauce. And you got Texas style, not so sweet, but maybe peppery and salt and pepper, the traditional, what I call uh, Franklin Austin style. And you have the California style, which is tri-tip in Santa Maria, which is the region on the coast uh, between San Francisco and Los Angeles. That's where that tri-tip barbecue originated. They like a garlicky and a black pepper and salty kind of finish. Now that's just backyard and restaurant profiles. Now, if you're talking about competition profiles, what does it take to win? I'm a big proponent of what we call Harry's purple cow. <laughs> so you're what the heck is he talking about, right? So when I cook barbecue on the competition circuit, I'm there not to please the judges, I'm there to win. And I need to come up with a profile that is unique that the judges will award the highest scores. So for example, everybody's cooking sweet and you cook sweet, ho hum, there's 100 teams out there. Uh, it's unlikely that the sweet entry will stand out. So I'll give you a couple of examples. I, I cooked, uh, let's say last year, I cooked in Lubbock, Texas. I was good for reserve champion among 70 teams. I had to make a choice. Do I go to Texas, cook the Dalmatian route, which is salt and pepper, and cook basically sort of a little bit of a, a Texas style brisket with good bark, or do I go all the way and cook a style of barbecue, the California style, which is basically sweet and spicy? So it's almost criminal to, to, to sauce the brisket, but I went to Lubbock in Texas, against 70 teams, I sauced my brisket, cook it California style, that was good enough for reserve champion uh, that day against 70 teams. So what I'm trying to show you is that the flavor profile varies. Uh, the flavor profile has certain regional characteristics based on which part of the country you're on, but as a competitor, you, are, you need to follow Harry's Purple Cow and go with the flow of what you think will win. Okay, hope that helps. That's an article on my website. If you type in Purple Cow on my website, slapperdaddybbq.com, there's a little bit more blurb about that. All right, cool. Next one, Luke Serrington. Love my kettle. What made you stick with one? Hey, you know, I love all pits, right? And it really doesn't really matter what kind of pit you have, what kind of cooking style you have, whether you want to grill a hot dog, uh, you, you, you want to boil your ribs, and then you want to grill them. Hey, it's all good. I always tell people, the key to barbecue is having fun 
spreading love and just basically getting out and doing something. The fact that you're standing up, you're able to cook barbecue, you're able to eat it, hey, you're a winner already. You know, you don't have to worry about anything else. All right? Rob Howdy, Heidi Sensei, okay, <laughs> my sensei. All right, I have a lot of students, right? I have been on the barbecue circuit for nine years. I made a commitment a while ago to start teaching, to share my love for barbecue and share my knowledge. I have taught so many classes around the world. I have had, I think, in excess of 2,500 children around the world. I treat them all special, and uh, they know that when they come and take my class, they're part of me, they know me. We are friends for life, right? I'm not saying kidding when I say that. Friends for life. They get free, unlimited, lifetime technical support from me. So they can call me, email me anytime. I'm always ready for them because I want to help people further their barbecue journey because life is really about spreading barbecue love. All right. Hello from Gajin country from uh, Jerry Corville. Hey, great, great to see you, Jerry. Again, th you're welcome for the tips. Uh, let's see here, Casey. Okay, what was your mini WSM heat wrap made out of? Any tips for homemade WSM? Okay, a mini WSM is basically a tamale pot that you cut open the bottom and you put it on a Smoky Joe. Uh, mine is made by my buddy uh, from Arizona and uh, I used it for a contest in Lancaster, California. I uh, did a KCBS contest, had five walks on it, including second in dessert. So if you go to my website, type in mini WSM or uh, what do you call it, tamale pot, you, you see it. So what, are the, what is the WSM heat wrap made of? Uh, you can just put a, what do you call, a welding blanket around it. So on a cold night, uh, you can wrap it with a welding blanket. Uh, what you do is you cut the welding blanket to size and then you go find a local dry cleaning store and then have the, you know, the nice lady sew you some Velcro around it and that really works, okay? Next one, Jeremy Gim. Is your smoke box something you made or purchased from somewhere? Okay, the smoke box is from my buddy, Patrick King. He invented that little small shoe box smoker, which I actually is my kind of fave little smoker because I actually carried that on the airplane with my blocks of wood. And uh, I'm cooking a, a whole meal now using a little tiny shoe box piece of metal. Uh, Patrick has uh, asked me to give one away. So Wes, who's the admin for uh, the uh, barbecue uh, smokers will be actually uh, going to, to uh, pick a winner. And uh, we're gonna give one away. But uh, it, it's a really great little smoke box. It's a great invention. He won, I think, fourth uh, innovation award at the National Barbecue Association National Conference in Fort Worth. What's your favorite meat to grill? Wow, what's my favorite meat to grill? It's like, man, I, I, I love to cook and uh, any, any meat is good. Uh, my current fave now is actually cooking ribs again. Uh, I like my ribs kind of char charred and hard, kind of like churrascaria style, a Brazilian style. And uh, I eat with pico de gallo and a squeeze of lemon and some garlic. So that's, that's, that's my favorite meat to eat is uh, ribs. Okay, where can I get one of those smoke boxes? Uh, you go to diamondkingsmoker.com and uh, you know you can, you can buy one online. They are, I think, about maybe $60, $65 to $75. Uh, they come with some wood and they have those little uh, fire starters. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I burned mine, but this, you put a fire starter in and it starts up. And, and it's really, really uh, easy to use and, and uh, it works really well, as, as you can see. So it's been about, uh, let's see, about 26 minutes now and the pit is nice and hot. Uh, it's probably around, ooh, hot. Uh, it's about 300 degrees now. Let me show you to you here and just burning out a few pieces of wood means getting nice and smoky. So this is called a, uh, a smoke and sear method. So I'm gonna smoke the meat a little bit uh, and uh, after that we're going to basically char it up. All right, show you guys how to do X flip. Okay, next question is, uh, your mix is 60 pecan and 40% peach. Yeah, that's fine too. Pecan and peach work really well. Okay, Jason asks, is there a good low sodium rub recommend? Yes, I do. I actually sell a low sodium rub. So uh, I show you kind of my, my rub bottles here, uh, but I actually make uh, several different kinds. I make a rub also, say similar rub, it's got MSG, I also make a low sodium version. But those are sold in little plastic bags because the people who want to buy those rubs are typically competitors or people who have uh, what you call doctor restricted diets. So my regular rub is, is just regular sodium, no MSG, but you can buy the MSG version of my rub. You just go to slaveydaddybb.com. Uh, we sell them in uh, five pound bags, eight pound bags. I have a, rest a lot of restaurants are buying from me also, they're buying in a 25 pound bag. So I'm I'm sure you don't need that much, but if you want 25 pounds, uh, we sell them with 25 pound bags around the country. Okay, next question is, uh, what is your type of smoker and why? Uh, you know, there's, there's really no, no um, good or bad smoker out there. If you know how to run your pit, uh, it's going to be great. And uh, I tend to use the Weber Smoky Mountain, the 18-inch one, primarily because I'm a one-smoker pit 
competitor. So when I load up my van, I'm my own driver, I'm my own dishwasher, I'm my own cook. So I like to travel light. I used to compete with two Weber Smoky Mountains, but now I'm down to one. Uh, and I've also competed with one tamale pot uh, against teams with 50,000 to up to 100,000 worth of equipment. So it's never about the smoker, it's always about the pit master, never about the pit, never about the cooker, it's about the cook that matters. All right, hopefully that answers your question. Kevin Wood, have you ever smoked with green on seasoned wood? Yes, I have. Um, it has um, kind of mixed results. I, as I mentioned in my earlier answer, I tend to go for barkless wood because I'm very particular about the resin in the wood because I'm evaporating the resin because it's the evaporation of the resin that uh, creates the magic of barbecue. If you want to Google it, it's called the paralysis of lignin. So I, I, it takes, it's going to take me 20, 15 minutes to answer, but if there's a lot of interest, I, I can get in great detail. I could talk for eight hours about many, many different topics. All right, so I'll just keep on. Uh, Jason said, hey, my friend Larry went to one of your classes last year, hopefully one attending soon. I'm trying to convince my wife, letting you go. All right, Jason, uh, show your wife this video and tell him Harry Sue is telling Jason McEllern to let to come to my class. I teach classes in, in the SoCal, uh, in Diamond Bar. Uh, I have classes coming, I think, in the Weber in Chicago also. So I may be teaching up in NorCal. So look out for me and come to class one day. If you can't come to class, no worries, Jason. I have a lot of recipes on my website. I share all my secrets online and I'm going to do more on all the Facebook live format. Okay, Nick Curry, what's the craziest thing you ever smoked? Uh, well, I, it depends on which month. <laughs> a few months ago, I was uh, asked to cook in Sydney, Australia. I flew down to Sydney, taught three classes back to back. It was exhausting. And then my host, uh, Rohan Dimong, is a crazy ass Australian. Uh, he uh, insisted that I try to beat the record that uh, cooked so many items that no other pit master instructor coming to Australia could ever beat. So we went up to, on one day, on the second class, we cooked 35 items, the crazy ass guy, right? 35 items in six hours hands on a full class. So in that class, uh, we wanted to cook something exotic from Australia. I said, hey, you know, I'm in Australia. What do I cook? We got to cook kangaroo. So we went out and find some kangaroo. And then the other exotic animal in Australia is called the emu, which is kind of like a, a, a flightless ostrich. And if you look at the Australian coat of arms, they have the ostrich and the emu pushing each other into the, uh, the crest of the Australian flag. And the reason they do that is because the kangaroo cannot move backwards and the emu cannot move backwards. So they have these two creatures pushing it against. So I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool to cook an emu and cook a kangaroo? We found some exotic uh, butcher shop where they sold it and we actually cooked it up. Uh, interesting thing is uh, out of the class of Australians, <laughs> about uh, two thirds of them had never tasted it, emu. So there you go. So even local Australians have never tasted an exotic animal like an emu. So I would say the emu and the kangaroo would be the two craziest uh, animals I've ever cooked. Uh, Aaron's asking, Aaron Bland Shed is asking, how do you get rubs? You can go to slapbydaddybbq.com and get my rubs there. Uh, they're on my store page. You can also go to Amazon. Amazon charges a little bit more money because you, know, you have to pay a premium to get on Amazon, but you want it cheaper, just go to my site. All right, if you're in LA, uh, you want to stop by my home uh, in Diamond Bar and pick them up, that's great too. Okay, Jeremy Green, I hope that's smoke meets cancer cancer in California. <laughs> I couldn't read the joke. Uh, well, you know, actually, um, I have to tell you, you're wrong uh, because uh, uh, actually uh, the smoke in the meat has antimicrobial, anti-cancer, anti-fungal properties. So it's going to take me about 20 minutes to explain, but I'm going to tell you upfront: uh, smoke bar barbecue does not cause cancer. All right, period. Okay, <laughs> okay. I know it's a joke, Jeremy. <laughs> no, no, no offense taken. All right, uh, Noah, what is the weirdest thing you've ever cooked? Um, let me think for a second here. Uh, I cooked the watermelon paella last week for my class, so that would be probably the weirdest thing I've ever cooked. Uh, it was kind of a, a, a dare, uh, because I'm always challenging myself to be a MacGyver, cooking on the crazy ass things. I cook a lot of crazy bacon inventions. You go to my website, you type in bacon, the whole bunch of crazy things pop up, like I cook a turtle of, you know, bacon. Uh, you know, I cook a lot of exotic meats. I mentioned the emu and uh, the uh, uh, kangaroo uh, earlier. All right, next thing, Tyrone Lozano, do you use a water pan? Yes, I use a water pan when I cook a WSM, but my water pan is dry. So I wrap my wa uh, water pan in foil. After the cook, I remove the foil and reline it for the next cook. Uh, I prefer not to use water because I am trying to create bark on my meat. Uh, bark is a mallard reaction. It works better when the meat dries out faster using uh, a dry, dry heat. All right, so that's my style. I control the water content in my pit using a 99 cent spray bottle, which I control. I spray my meat uh, once it starts crusting. I don't spray the meat when it just begins. I hope that answered your question. Jason Cohen, what is your go-to smoker for your favorite, or your favorite smoker? I know you are famous using WSM. Have you used the gateway drum, now the smoker box? If you had to pick one, what would it be and why? Okay, see more in a second here. Uh, okay, so uh, again, Jason, 
uh, Cohen, I don't have a favorite smoker. Uh, I love my my uh, Big Papa drum. Uh, I love my Gateway. I I, rely, I like my Green Mountain pellet cooker. Uh, I cook using the kettle, as you can see here. I cook using the Weber Smoky Mountain. I, I think what is more important is basically not worrying so much about the equipment uh, and just having fun, having family, having memories, having relationships, having that connection and spreading love. That's really what, what barbecue is all about. It's just having fun. You know, I'm sitting out here in the backyard and look, look out there, such a gorgeous day. I'm out here cooking barbecue, you know, answering questions. To, to me, that, that's really sharing the community of love, uh, the community and love of barbecue. All right, Chris uh, Mohini, Mohini Hini says, what's your favorite temp in WSM? Okay, I cook at two temperatures, very simple. I cook only hot and hotter. So today, this one is, is, is hot, right, and hotter. So 250, 275 is good. When I sear and I grill, uh, I take it to about, say, 350, 400. So basically, hot, hotter, and hottest. That, that's basically three temperatures that I like. Angie uh, Quillette, do you think the big green egg is worth the money? Absolutely. I think that uh, you get what you pay for. There are many, many good ceramic cookers out there. Uh, the green egg is just one of them. Uh, I think uh, all ceramic cookers have pros and cons. Uh, like, like Weber's have pros and cons, just like the drums have pros and cons. As a pit master, your goal really is to hit the full potential using the equipment you have. And I don't care if you're cooking with cement blocks, with chicken wire, with a hole in the ground. If you know what you're doing, it's going to be a good pit. You're going to have a good result. Okay, Gina, Gino Ila says, what are your tips for first time com? I'm doing one in SoCal next month. Uh, okay, so Gino, go to my website and key in first com. Uh, I have an article there written by my fiance, Butch's Daughter Barbecue. She gives you all the tips you need to excel in the com. On my website, I also have a checklist of uh, things that you need to kind of get. You have a, need a lot of doodads when you compete. Uh, you probably need like 80, 90 items uh, to do a good job. So go to my website and then uh, look at all the things that, that are there. Uh, on my Amazon page, on my website, I also have all the things that I buy. Everything I use on my web uh, that I recommend is torture tested by me. So it really works. And every single piece of equipment that I go through is basically proven to work in the heat and the fire of actual competition. So I'm very fussy about the equipment I use. I, I like good equipment and uh, I don't like to spend a lot of money. Uh, I'm very process efficient. I'm also very cost efficient. So I'm, I'm lazy and, and, and cheap. So uh, that's my criteria. So I hope that helps. All right. Uh, let's see here. Jerry Walker uh, started using turbinado sugar. Love it. Yeah, turbinado is raw sugar. That's great too. Uh, you can use many kinds of sugar. Sugar involves the caramelization of uh, basically the sugars. There are actually five kinds of sugars uh, and some of the sugars tend to caramelize at a higher temperature. Uh, fructose begins at like 275 degrees, but using raw sugar is fine if you enjoy using raw sugar. I actually use raw sugar when I uh, cook ribs and I sprinkle uh, brown sugar into my uh, foil before I put my ribs on. Okay, Michael Braga, have you ever smoked dish with tofu in it? Yes, of course, for my veggie friends. Uh, in fact, if you go to my website, right, if you type in vegan pulled pork, I actually made a vegan pulled pork. That's extremely popular. A lot of the uh, restaurants around the country are actually going to my website looking at my vegan barbecue recipes because when you are a restauranter, you, are, you have to be able to be versatile. There is a large community of people out there who actually uh, don't eat meat. Uh, they are vegans. Uh, I try to not discriminate against anyone, and I cook uh, basically vegan food. In catering gigs that we do, a lot of times we get, at, we get asked to do vegan food, and uh, why not, right? Uh, when in fact, a little tidbit here, when I was on a TV show, uh, Pit Master Season 1, uh, they used to kind of like rib me for, on a show for saying, hey, who's this guy from California? How dare he come here and be on this show amid all these world champions? And uh, he's from California, so what does he know how to cook? Uh, tofu and artichokes? Uh, yes, I cook tofu and I cook artichokes. And uh, if you uh, look at uh, my uh, rub here, look who has the last lap. This is my uh, all-purpose rub. And if you look at the back here, he says recommended for, uh, here we go, here we can see it, for tofu too. So I have the last laugh, guys. So everybody knows what happened in season one finale. The little uh, team that could from California against three world champions did really well in the season finale. Okay, I literally had to pry the money out of Myron's hand. So there you go. <laughs> so a little, just a little bit of trivia for you here. Uh, okay, next question, Chris Reap. From Florida. Hey, Chris from Florida. What method you use for pork ribs? I use the standard method. Uh, I uh, basically marinate my ribs overnight in the competition and then I let it dry, put my rub on, let it sit for about 45 minutes and I cook it, foil it, and then uh, I get it to nice and tender and then I cut it for the box uh, and I apply the sauce before I, I put it into the, uh, the box here. Uh, let's see, next question. Appreciate your time, my waterman. Matthew Han, what's your advice for newcomers? Okay, advice for newcomers is very simple. Number one, 
go hang out at a barbecue contest first. Uh, if you can, go, go take a class, uh, take a barbecue cooking class, take a judging class, uh, immerse yourself in your local scene, join your local uh, state uh, barbecue association, hang out with barbecue friends, uh, get into barbecue without spending any money first. Okay, so go out and get exposed. See if you like it, join your team if you can. Uh, I have many of my students who join me on my team when I cook. And once you get into the flow of barbecue and you want to really compete, then you can start to have fun and practice at home and make a baby step and just go to your very first contest and just have fun. Uh, I always tell people when you go to your very first contest, your goal is not to win the contest. You just want to go have fun, turn in four meets and don't get disqualified. All right. All right, Ryan Estes, besides your rub, what are your favorite go-to rubs? Uh, you know, there are many, many good rubs out there. Uh, I make some rubs. Uh, there are many, many good rubs made by some of the other California team. Uh, Sterling Ball makes them. Steph makes them. Uh, a lot of the national pitmasters like Cosmos, uh, they make them. Uh, so what do you call You It's really up to you. Uh, the rub is important, but what's more, more important is you learning how to fuse that seasoning to your protein. And that's no shortcut. You have to sit down, you have to practice, you have to turn in your meat, get your butt kicked, come home, retool, redesign, rework, reconfigure, and go try again. All right? Uh, let's see, James Humphreys, judge, don't just watch, give this knowledge some likes. Okay, all right, that's cool. Nick Curry. Uh, got my smoker rolling, watching Harry Sue live. Life is awesome, thank you. Hey, Nick, life is awesome too, man. Thank you for joining us. James Humphrey finished Hot Wings. Okay, should put your picture out. Christine Johnson, what's your go-to item to bring to social gathering? Okay, social gatherings is uh, when I show up for social gathering, everybody expects me to bring food. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's always the case. Uh, I like to do what I call happiness in a bag. So a lot of times I just bring a little gallon Ziploc bag with happiness in it. So it could be something as simple as some New Zealand style uh, lamb lollipops that I just uh, season with some fresh garlic, rosemary. Uh, and then uh, I just bring that whole thing to my to uh, the site and I just put my rub on and I grill it for everybody. Or it could be as simple as uh, putting in uh, some Korean cow bee in a bag and showing up. So my go-to item is to a social gathering is to bring a, uh, a bag of happiness uh, with meat in it. Uh, Wes Phillips, uh, like him up, Kevin Wood. How do you know when you have just enough rub on your meat? Do you layer different rubs? Yes, I do layer different rubs on my meat. On my particular rub that I demonstrated earlier, if you go back and watch the video, um, I put enough to make an opaque layer. So that means that when I apply enough rub, so that the bottom layer of meat cannot be seen. And I stop there. If I'm doing a big pork butt or brisket, then I would do double up. So one layer is called single pat because you never rub a rub. You always apply a rub and you pat the rub down, kind of like a baby's bottom. Uh, in my butt and brisket, I put two layers, so I call it a double pat. Luke uh, Swearingen says, what's your favorite thing to cook in your own backyard? Uh, I enjoy cooking ribs, uh, and uh, I'm gonna be cooking ribs my style today, so you're gonna see the result, which reminds me, I better go check on the ribs here, make sure that it's not getting overdone. <coughs> Okay. All right, getting there. Yeah, it's pretty fast, right? It's been about uh, 40 minutes now. Okay, steak is good. I'm gonna flip it over. Okay. All right, one second. Let me go flip the uh, meat. meat over here. Okay, it's always very important to season your meats. So if you flip it over, it looks a little bit uh, kind of, uh, you know, kind of a bear. You just make sure you season it. Put it back on. Okay, back again. All right. 
Uh, Patrick King. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for uh, donating your uh, smoker and sponsoring the giveaway here. Uh, it's going to be fabulous. Okay, so you can buy it at diamondkingsmoker.com. Great, great device. Huh? It's my new fave cooker now. All right, Jamie Taylor. My wife says I have too many grills. I have eight. I don't see a problem. Jamie, you are, you're fine. You know, I know people with 58 grills. Uh, so uh, that was Toby Shear from the UK. So you have only eight. So you've got about 50 more to go. So no, no worries there, right? All right, West Philly, friends or life? Dan McClure, is there any value to dry rubbing the meat, then vacuum sealing, refrigerating for time? How long? All right, so some people like to apply the rub, then they vacuum seal the meat, they put the meat away and let it basically do a wet and dry brine overnight or even longer. Uh, I'm sure that it, it works. The same scientific mechanism works is that the salt ions basically will penetrate the meat and season the meat and then all the flavors from the rub, the seasoning, the garlic, the paprika, the, the, the salts and everything, they will penetrate the meat. So. I, I don't do vacuum sealing, so I'm, I'm not an expert, but I, I understand the concept. I do a dry brine. For example, my first place, USA Chicken, was done during a dry, using a dry brine. Uh, I, I use this rub here, uh, which I put in the bottle here. Uh, duct, duct schneiding uh, from uh, a row cookers from Houston. He, he used my rub, and he won first place uh, in the Houston World Championship. So I can say at least I won World Champion who used my rub. Many other people have sent me emails saying they've used this rub, and they've won first place. So basically, uh, I, I put my rub on, and uh, it stays for about 10 hours. So I'm actually doing a dry brine. I don't will go to the trouble of vacuum sealing, but you know, if you want to vacuum seal, go ahead and have fun and let me know what the results are. Jason says here, it's great you keep in touch with everyone here. Yes, I try to do that. I have 300 emails a day and I try my very best. Uh, probably spend at least two hours each day answering emails, but I really want to answer emails because it means a lot to me to have so many barbecue brothers and sisters around the world because we're all on this same journey. We just want to uh, reach excellence in barbecue and spread some love in this world. Uh, Neil Jacoby, what is the typical oriental barbecue? Uh, you know, barbecue is actually international. You'll find barbecue everywhere in the world. Uh, you can have barbecue kebabs, uh, say the Middle Eastern style. You have yakitori from Japan. You have satay from Indonesia. You have braai from uh, Africa. Uh, you have many styles of barbecue within, say, America. But in terms of, let's say, oriental barbecue, I would have to say you have barbecue a lot in Asia. Uh, the Indonesians cook a wonderful sweet satay. Uh, Thai have satay. Thais cook a gaiyang chicken, which is kind of a chicken with curry paste and coconut milk. Uh, you move up a little bit north, uh, you go to Korea. The Koreans make wonderful, wonderful kalbi, uh, bulgogi. Uh, you go to Japan, you, you have yakitori. You go to the Philippines, you have lechon, you have a whole hog. It's just amazing. I mean, if you go to my website, you see that I showcase and highlight recipes from around the world. So it's all, all good barbecue. Any tips on first com? Again, Matt Armstrong, go ahead to our website and read the, the article about how to get ready for a first com. There's a checklist on our website and a list of uh, things that I use when I compete. So hopefully that will be helpful. If not, you just send me an email or I'll help you out more. Ryan Estes, what advice would you have for somebody looking to start a com cook? Same, same thing, go to my website, read the article about starting a barbecue. Uh, there's a book also by my buddy George Hensler, uh, Starting the Fires on Amazon. So go check that book out also. Uh, let's see, Matt, what is your favorite go-to commercial rub? Uh, I use my rub, the, my all-purpose, that's extremely popular. Uh, I cannot tell you how many people uh, use that rub uh, you know, at home. Uh, a lot of restaurants are using it. Uh, I sell them in 25 pound packs. So that's a really easy rub. Uh, economic quantity is, is kind of, the pricing is decent and then you can use it pretty much for everything. So I use that as my, my, my go-to commercial rub. Let's see, Fireworks on the Mini is awesome. Yeah, you go Matthew, Matthew MacArthur, you go to my website and then look at my, my uh, article on the uh, Weber Smoky, I mean, on the, uh, what do you call it, the tamale pot that I used. Uh, and uh, it's all about basically having fun and, and, you know, it's not meant to show anything off. It's just my personal challenge that I want to see if I can cook a whole contest uh, on a mini WSM. I cut my brisket into a circle. I cooked just three slabs of ribs with nine bones each. I got everything to fit. It was just more of a challenge for, for me. Tim Sullivan. Baby back or spares? Okay, uh, in competition, I cook St. Louis. So I buy a spare rib, I trim it to St. Louis style. Uh, in competition, I know baby backs are popular more in the Midwest, but on the West Coast, uh, we, they seem to do better with uh, these be, uh, St. Louis spares. Uh, Chris Mahini, pick me, or oh, I guess pick you for the giveaway. Okay, that's entirely out of my control. It's a random draw, so go see Wes and some of the admins on the website. All right, James Davila. Uh, do you cut your own wood? No, I don't cut my own wood. I get my wood uh, exclusively from uh, Patty from the woodshed in Orange County. 
Uh, it's called the woodshed.com. I get all my wood there. Uh, all my students and all my friends, when they need the wood, they just they'll tell uh, Patty, say, can I have the Harry Sue special? Basically, what I have is I have tennis sized chunks of barkless wood. So uh, Patty and her crew will cut it for you and they'll ship around the country. And, uh, you know, that, that's really good wood because her wood is dry. There's no bark and it's cut exactly to my spec, which is about a tennis sized chunk, maybe a two and a half, three inch chunk. Uh, and I use about uh, eight pieces of wood, four hickory and four apple in my competition rig on a WSM. Jason Williams, hot and fast or low and slow, what wood do you like? Okay, let me answer the first question. So, uh, cooking methods are hot and fast and low and slow. So, hot and fast means you're cooking over direct heat, probably over, say, 350 degrees. Low and slow is indirect heat, uh, probably below 300. Uh, both methods are good. I cook both methods. Uh, I cook on the WSM hot and fast, uh, sometimes with or without a water pan. I also cook low and slow on the Weber Smoky Mountain with or without a water pan. So, uh, it's really up to the pit master. Uh, both methods do work. Uh, more recently, uh, the hot and fast, a direct method has been getting a lot of publicity because some of the top teams in America are using that method. Uh, whatever method you use, so long as you're having great results and having fun, that's great. What would you like for competition? I use a hickory and apple and then put, sometimes I use cherry on my ribs. Okay, John Edward. Okay, use a rub, a mop, a sauce, no need to inject a hog. Oh, okay, so he's talking about hog. Uh, when I cook the hog for competition, I injected the hog. So I just use a vapor based uh, injection. So that, that seems to work. I'm no means a hog expert. I cooked the uh, one hog contest and I cooked a hog a few times. On the West Coast in California, we don't have whole hog contest, even though I would love to cook a hog contest. Next question, Patrick King. Have you used plum or almond wood? Yes, Patrick King. I have used plum. Uh, you sent me a bag of plum. I actually use the plum. Actually, it's great. Uh, I've never used plum wood, but thanks for sending the plum. Really, really great wood. We're going to actually, I think I have a couple of pieces of plum in the pit right now. So we'll, we'll see the results in a little bit. Okay, Guy Duncan, what do you dust your calm ribs after you sauce? Oh, oh, what do you dust your calm rib with after you sauce. Uh, I just grind up some of my uh, chicken rub. So this is the chicken rub here. So I, I told you earlier, a lot of teams are doing well using the chicken rub on the meat side of the ribs and using my all purpose on the bone side. Uh, I do grind up some of the chicken rub into a fine powder and I sprinkle that on a rub just before I put it in the box. So that gives it a final pop in flavor. Bill Ross says, uh, when you're doing brisket at home, do you inject? Yes, I do, Bill, because if I'm gonna spend, what, 14 hours cooking meat, I might as well make it the best I can. I don't like to compromise because it's just taking a long investment of time to cook a brisket well. I'd much rather do it all the way or not, not at all. So uh, the answer is yes. Okay, where's uh, the WSM? Paul Dexter, I have an 18 WSM for brisket. What time do you run and when do you wrap? Okay, Paul Dexter, uh, I uh, run my briskets around 250 to 275 uh, in my pit. I use a WSM 18 on the top rack. It usually takes me about, say, eight to 10 hours to get it to crust. After that, I wrap it in foil and I continue to cook until it's done. Typically, briskets uh, in, the, say, the 15 pound range are done in approximately 11 to 13 hours. Uh, I, I like to cook 18 pound briskets. I trim it down to about maybe 14 pounds for competition. Steve, a class in Chicago. Yes, Steve or, or Zula. Uh, I am teaching uh, at the Weber Academy in Schaumburg, uh, June 10th, I think. They haven't sent me the particulars yet, but I, I'll, I'll be there teaching a class. I'm not even sure what the class is going to be, but it's all fun. I can not tell you how much fun I had cooking at Weber Chicago. A few years ago, I was so honored to be invited to go to Chicago and I had a chance to train and teach all the executive chefs at Weber, train all the R&D engineers, and I met a fantastic man, Eric Schlosser. He is the man, he's the inventor of the Weber Smoky Mountain, the Flavorizer Bar, the Genesis, and all of the great Weber inventions were invented by Eric Schlosser. He came out of retirement, uh, he was uh, probably a 80 plus year old gentleman, he came out of retirement to meet me. And it was amazing. He, he was so excited to meet me as I was excited to meet him. It was that scene from Star Wars, you know, where Darth Vader meets Luke and father, father, son. <laughs> he was just a fantastic, surreal experience. And I tell people this story because on my barbecue journey, when I entered that bucket list uh, challenge, I never imagined that this would take me around the world, meet so many wonderful people in the journey of barbecue and spreading love. All right. Uh, James Davila, come to the East Coast. Yes, James, I plan to come to the East Coast when I can. I used to teach on the East Coast also. Uh, uh, what do you call uh, I, I have not had a chance to do that, but hopefully soon. James Anderson, thank you. Check out the rubs. Well, we are low sodium due to kidney function. Yes, I do have a low sodium version, uh, so please go online. Uh, we, we sell them in, in plastic bags uh, because uh, I, I don't have a label for, for the low sodium. But if you go to my website, uh, you can actually get a low sodium version of my rub. It's, it's all good. 
uh, Jason here. Thanks for the shout out. I will show her tonight. Yes, Jason, go show her and tell her that I gave you authority to spend $2,000 today. Okay, based on this video, I hereby bequeath you with a $2,000 limit on buying barbecue doodads. All right, just quote, quote, my quote me to your wife. All right, let me go back and check my meat here. One second. Okay, color is great. Check the temp here. Okay, that's about right. Okay, let me uh, go ahead and char some of the meat up. All right, while I'm doing this, I'll multitask and keep answering questions. Let's see here. Uh, uh, alumni, okay, David Barnett, I just alumni. I highly recommend the class. David, thanks, thanks for the shout out here. Glad you enjoyed the class. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, Mike Waterman, do you like to smoke salmon? Yes, absolutely, salmon's great, great, great meat. Uh, you go to my website, you can see a cedar plank salmon recipe. You just get a cedar plank, wet it overnight, and uh, get your salmon on, and uh, Get some of my rub with brown sugar. So one part of my rub, one part brown sugar. Just put it on, put a little bit of flavored oil and you're all set. Okay, so hopefully Brad from Grill Grits is watching. I'm using his Grill Grit right now. And the Grill Grit really does a fabulous job charring the, the meat. Okay, this is pretty much done. Okay, good. All right. Let me see here for a little bit here. All right, next question. All right, what's the best meat to inject with fruit, juice, any juice? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is how it works. Uh, if you look at the different parts of the country, you'll find that certain fruits grow in certain parts of the country and certain animals go well with certain fruits, right? So for example, uh, when you say best meat to inject with fruit juice, if you're talking apple juice or peach, uh, the thing that comes to mind immediately is pork. So that's why when you eat a pork chop, they serve you applesauce. If you take that same apple and you try to inject it into a brisket, yeah, it probably wouldn't work, right? So you probably already know that fruit juice go well with things like pork, it goes well with chicken, uh, but I wouldn't try to inject a, a brisket with apple juice, all right? Hope that helps. Okay, Luke uh, Swearingen says, Emo is awesome. I agree, Emo is awesome. It tastes kind of like venison. So if you don't overcook the Emo, it's actually amazing. Okay, Gino, Ila, what brand store locale has good chicken thighs? The one I find has small skin. What do you mean small skin? Uh, you mean small thighs? Uh, yeah, Gino, I, I shop uh, at, uh, let me think for a second. When I compete, I shop at uh, Tyson's in Sam's. Oh, I buy, uh, I'm sorry, not Tyson's, uh, is it Tyson's? Yeah, Tyson's in Sam's and Foster's in Costco. What I do is I buy uh, kind of a, enough chicken. So in order for me to trim 16 pieces for a contest, I buy maybe about 25 pieces. And you know, usually the ratio is about two thirds. So out of three pieces, two are usable for competition. The other one, I just save and cook it for my family. I hope that helps. Neil, Jacoby, any good sauces for diabetic people watching? Uh, you know, I, I'm not an expert on sauces that don't have sugar, so I, I have to pass on that. But uh, I'm sure if you go out to a health food store, they, they will, you will find uh, sauces that, that don't have so much sugar. Mark Meyer, hey Hank, thank you. Okay, really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Mark, for having me. Art Martinez, have you ever smoked pizza? Yes, uh, yeah, if you go to my website, you see pizza uh, recipes and uh, you know, it's great. You can make a yeast dough pizza, you can buy a ready-made dough from Trader Joe's or you can buy just a kind of a pita bread pizza. They all work on a, on, on a grill. Uh, you can cook it on a Weber, you can cook it on a Green Mountain, you can cook it on a WSM. So long as you get a temperature up to 400, you can kind of pretty much cook a pizza. All you need is melt the cheese and then rise the dough. All right, so the pizza is great on a, on a pit. Ryan, uh, do you prefer chicken thighs or lollipop for comps? I cook chicken thighs exclusively. So I've won uh, first place USA cooking chicken thighs. I know it's boring, but hey, you know, you can't go with a, uh, you know, anything else because it, it works, it, ju it just works, right? So, uh, you know, you try to remove all the, the variables in, in the contest. Tim Bear watching, Ryan, do you do cooking class on the East Coast? I used to do cooking classes on the East Coast, uh, but now, uh, you know, I, I've been focusing on the West Coast primarily because my, my day job, 
is really busy. Uh, I basically am a program manager. I oversee uh, a team of about a dozen project managers. We build data centers and stuff. So it's really busy. Um, I am responsible for 300 cities, uh, 5,000 square miles. One out of two Californians uh, rely on what my company does for, for water. Every time anybody turns on the faucet and uh, the water flows, that means that my, my team has something to do with it. So it's really a full-time job. I, I'm very passionate about my job and with the purpose of my job. I also am very, very passionate about barbecue. So every Friday after work, I change my persona. I, I drop my uh, dockers and my uh, goofy, uh, uh, nerdy costume, and I put on the hat, put on my Slap Your Daddy shirt, and I'm in a different world, hanging out with you guys and having a good time. Okay, next thing. Tyrone says, how do you set up your charcoal when lighting a WSM? What is the best way to control your temp on the WSM? Uh, the WSM is set up using something called the, the, the uh, Minion Method. And the Minion Method involves basically making a crater. Okay, let me turn, you guys see how beautiful this is. Okay, so I'm flipping on the rib. Look at that. Look at the char that. Pretty awesome. All right, food porn right here. Look at that. So the uh, grill grates together with a Diamond King smoker, they work like magic here. So all I'm cooking is just cooking out of uh, maybe eight pieces of wood in a little box, a little metal box made by Patrick King. And uh, I'm using a grill grate right here, made by uh, Brad Barrett from grillgrates.com. And uh, I carry this actually on an airplane with me on Southwest in my backpack. I carried the uh, smoker box in my backpack. So you can say that this entire ensemble here was carried on an airplane. And uh, I just borrowed a, a kettle from, from, my, from my sweetheart. And that, that's how it looks like. Uh, I can tell it's almost ready. Let me just do a quick temp on it here. Yeah, little char marks here. Let's smoke a little bit here. Uh, I'm gonna shoot some, uh, put some flavored oil on it now. Uh, this is the shallow oil I told you about. I, I like to use flavored oils. When I compete, I do use flavored oils. When I compete, that's my secret weapon. And the flavored oils gives it lots of flavor. And uh, not to be undone, we can do some vegetables too, right? So I have some uh, thick slices of broccoli here. Smoke some broccoli for dinner. See, so I, I get to do a Facebook live post, hang out with you guys, have a good time, and uh, I cook dinner for the family. See, it's all good. This is what really barbecue is about. It's hanging out, cooking barbecue, playing with smoke, meat and fire, and talking to friends, right? And talking to your brother, barbecue brothers and sisters. That's what really barbecue is all about. Okay, sit for a little while. All right, back to the front camera here. Questions? All right. Um, all right, how do you, Tyrone asks, how do you set up a charcoal? I, I set up my charcoal kind of in the minion method. I make a pile of coals in the fire grate in the WSM and I make a little volcano crater and I put hot coals in it and let the hot coals burn outwards. The wood is completely underneath the charcoal. So I put the wood chunks, eight chunks, four apple, four hickory, and then I lay on the charcoal and then it burns outwards. Uh, on a WSM 18, I can get an 18 hour, 16 hour burn from one uh, bag of charcoal. So I cook an entire contest with about one bag of Kingsford. Now, Myron uses two bags of Kingsford just to start his pit. So I'm done cooking two contests by the time he starts his pit. Tim Bear, uh, doing any TV shows this year? Uh, I've shot some shows that are in development right now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm doing something in New Mexico also, and who knows, maybe in a Weber one day they'll end up making a show out of it. Uh, I was on, uh, what do you call the uh, Cutthroat Kitchen. That was, a, that, was a <laughs> that was a tough show to be on. It's not a cooking show. That is an obstacle course, right? Of course, I, I get frog's legs. You know, go, go figure, right? It's, it's impossible to make a cheeseburger out of frog's legs. Give me frog's legs and white wine and garlic, I'm okay. Give me fried frog's legs, I can do, but not making frog's legs into a burger. That, that doesn't work, so. All right, Paul Dexter, when cooking brisket, does the grade of beef make a difference? Select choice, prime, etc. Yes, Paul. Uh, the, the meat is very important. As I said earlier, the number one most important item in your barbecue portfolio is the meat. All right, so I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that Harry can take a poor cut of meat and convert hamburger into filet mignon. I cannot. So when I compete, I like to start with the best quality meat. When I cook at home, cook for family and friends, I like to start with the best quality of meat. So your question is choice, prime, or select. Uh, between choice and prime, it's kind of a toss up because some choice will taste better than prime. Some prime will taste better than choice. Almost all the time, prime and choice will taste better than select, guaranteed, right? And if you want to splurge, you can go to Snake River Farms. Uh, Snake River Farms, Anella helps me a little bit in sponsorship. Uh, Snake River Farms does make a, sell a good 
Wagyu beef. So you can buy gold or you can buy black grade. You're probably spending with shipping probably in the region of uh, maybe 200 to 300 dollars for a brisket. But it's definitely, definitely worth an experience. So if you've not tried a Snake River Farm Wagyu, go try it. And then uh, if you can buy Prime, I, I understand Prime now is down the $3 range, so it's easy to find. You can find Prime briskets in Costco. So I hope that helps. Uh, Bill Roth, can read the labels, they're backwards. Oops, what happened here? Are they backwards? I, I, oh, but maybe I gotta read them on the web, web website. Uh, let's see, do you rest your ribs? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, my ribs come off the pit in a contest and I turn them within the next, uh, within, the, within the 45 minute window. Mark Mai, I'm looking to start my own backyard smokers competition. Would you be interested in coming to Missouri to compete with us once I get it all set up and running? Uh, well, you know, for backyard, I'd be happy to, to lend a hand and, uh, you know, uh, you know go, go and teach a class before the uh, event. Uh, and uh, just hang out and hang out with my barbecue brothers and sisters uh, in a competition. I, I, I really enjoy that. Uh, I'm uh, headlining an event in New Mexico and uh, you know, I'm going to be cooking and teaching uh, barbecue. So anytime there's barbecue, I, I'm, I'm there in a heartbeat. Uh, Mark Murray, what are your opinions on trimming the fat cap off the brisket pork butt? No, oh, no, I leave my fat cap on. So simple answer. That's a three-hour argument right there. I leave everything on. So I cook fat side down. Okay, Harry cooks fat side down. Okay, and if you want to argue with Harry, more power to you. Okay, Jason. Uh, McGurlin, uh let me know. I'll be there as long as I get some leave from the military. Great. You know, again, uh, Jason, I uh, want to congratulate you. Thank you for your sacrifice to our country. I'm not sure which branch you, you work for, but I want to tell you something, right? You guys are doing a fantastic job. All the uh, men and women of the military are fantastic people. Uh, you want to I will have you know that when I teach barbecue classes, a lot of their proceeds, right, they, they benefit charities. The two charities that support uh, save the children because every single day, 22,000 children die around the world due to poverty, neglect, abuse, and disease. The same second charity I support is Operation Homefront. We take care of the veterans, the families, and the, and the, uh, the active personnel. So that's what I do for, for barbecues. I want to give back, and uh, Operation Homefront is a great charity. And thank you, James, for your service to our great country. James Davila, Big Papa makes great product. Can't say enough good stuff. What is your rub? What is why? What is your rub on the website? Yes, uh, James, uh, my rub is on Big Papa's website. Serling's a good guy. They make great products, and he's really, really uh, put a lot of innovative products on the marketplace. Dave Bennett, any recommendations for non-competition cook to evaluate rub variations side by side without doing a full cook? Um, you know, David Bar Barnett, when it comes to rub, right, you can trust uh, a, a, you know, a respected voice and opinion. Uh, the other only way is you have to buy the rub, cook the meat, and then taste the meat after it's cooked. When you buy a rub, when you taste it raw, that is zero indication of how well the rub will be after it's cooked. There is no shortcut. You have to cook everything and taste everything. So that's why, you know, a lot of times I tell people you should go take a barbecue class. That way you can see what the instructor is doing and then kind of emulate the instructor and kind of pull off some of the tips. Uh, there's no one way to cook barbecue. There's many, many different ways. Uh, I have been in barbecue for a few years. I'm still learning. I consider myself a lifetime student of barbecue. And barbecue is completely diverse. We have one style called the American style. All you need to do is step across the border. There's the Mexican style, Brazilian style, Argentinian style, just a lot of styles of barbecue. And I love them all and I, I really want to learn them all. Um, Jamie Teller, do you like grill grits? Jamie, I would not leave home without my grill grits, right? Brad makes a great product. Uh, when I cook steaks, when I go on the road, uh, I, I bring my grill grits. Which reminds me, I better check on the meat here. Make sure it's doing well. Okay, I hope you can see this here. Let me turn the camera around one second here. Oh, you guys like broccoli. I like broccoli. All right. Get these off, get the steak on. So you can cook a meal for uh, quite a number of people here on one little grill grate and one Diamond King smoker. All right, so let me show you this egg flip, right? So we really pay attention here. So imagine this is a grill grate. You put on the meat first at a two o'clock position, like so, right? You wait about, say, a minute or two minutes, and then you flip it once, like this, and then you wait another 120 100 seconds, 
and you do actually pick it up and then you flip it over to the 10 o'clock position and after another two minutes you flip it one more time all right so this is called harry's x flip method if you, you want, haven't seen it before so one more time i'm sure can show you right so we do a little bit of barbecue hand line dancing so 10 o'clock two o'clock first 60 to 100 seconds flip once 60 to 100 seconds pick it up x flip over to the other side 60 to 100 seconds flip it over and you're done all right so we're gonna try that Okay, all right, so it's down to two o'clock position. All right, somebody watch the time here and then just tell, just tell me when my, my time is up so I can keep answering questions here. You guys can help, help me out and participate by uh, uh, keeping the time. All right, next one. I was watching old episodes of Barbecue Pit Master where you guys did the Johnny Trick shootout. Uh, let's see, uh, how did you feel to win a bit minor? Well, you know, I was totally shocked, right? At the end of the day, when we shot that episode in, uh, in Texas, uh, it was supposed to be Johnny's backyard, and uh, when you're in Texas, and uh, the host decides that he wants to have a throwdown with all the pitmasters on the show, he picks ribs, and you know he's like a three-time world rib champion, and he was shot in Texas. All the judges were master judges from Texas, so uh, I, you know, knew I had a snowball's chance in hell of winning that contest, especially against uh, so many world champions. When we were doing the shoot in the morning, they had it on a hill, a sloping hill. And uh, they, they put me at the bottom of the hill and I'm there with my little minivan and my Weber Smoky Mountain looking up the hill, looking at all the jambos and all the expensive pit. And I looked at myself, okay, so I'm in the season finale cooking against all these world champions and uh, I'm cooking at Weber Smoky Mountain and I'm cooking ribs and, you know, the host, uh, Johnny, Johnny is a world rib champion. So I honestly tell you, at the end of the day, I was completely shocked. So if you see that expression on my face on camera, that is a real expression of just complete shock that I ended up winning the season finale. Uh, it was heck a lot of fun. Uh, what you don't see behind the scenes is we all became friends because it took about three plus months to shoot all those episodes. And uh, there was a lot of camaraderie. Uh, when I first showed up on the show, uh, I was kind of like the fish out of water guy from California. I uh, had no idea what I was doing, but I, I learned along the way and uh, it was just all good fun. We're, we're still good friends today. Steve Love, how do you get burn ends to comp perfection? Uh, okay, so burn ends are very specialized uh, part of the brisket is at the point. So what you need to do is you need to know how to cook burn ends so that you reduce the burn ends and you get the fat all defatted, and but the burn ends still stays moist and juicy. So if you go to my website, I have a lot of uh, brisket recipes, so go check them out. If you have any questions about how to create uh, burn ends or how to cook brisket properly, just go ahead and email me, I'll, I'll try to answer them. But uh, I'm gonna, maybe one of these days in a, in a live cook, Facebook, I'll actually do a brisket cook for you. In my class, I, I do a live brisket cook for my students what I do is I put the one brisket in at midnight so that when the class done is done preparing the raw brisket we have the brisket from midnight ready to go so the students can watch the entire process uh, uninterrupted Kelly Hardesty is saying what temp are you looking for in the ribs I don't uh, cook ribs to temp uh, so I cook the ribs to, to probe feel so, um, you know, there's many, many discussions about what is a proper temp. I don't use temp at all when cook ribs. I actually poke it with my thermal pen or the back of the plastic fork to gauge the uh, tenderness. For this particular rib I'm cooking today, these are grilled ribs. So they're not going to have the competition style tenderness with the bite through and the KCBS uh, uh, teeth marks and everything. Uh, these are the way I like to eat ribs. I eat my ribs with basically lime, uh, lime squeeze of lime, cilantro and pico di gallo. That's how I eat my ribs. So I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of that in a little bit. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jody is here. Attended your class. Donna, you're awesome. Good to see you here live on Facebook. Yeah, good to see you too, Jody. Uh, let's see here. We we're at one hour and 10 minutes. So uh, I told uh, Wes that we would go an hour, but hopefully I'm, I'm past that mark. You guys are still okay hanging out with me. Uh, the ribs are taking their time. The steaks taking their time. Nobody's telling me that steaks are done. Let me go check it out. Okay. I'll do one I'll do a flip at the two o'clock position right now okay so my my fire has 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 died down a little bit here so I'm not gonna be able to get a char so I probably put too, too little wood in it but that's that's okay we'll, 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 we'll make it work yeah one of the challenges is you're trying to talk answer questions and cook at the same time <laughs> but it's a lot of fun all right, let's see here. James Davila, is that little box the only heat source? Yes, you are right. That's the only heat source. 
I saw you cook it, right, on the other box the other day. Do you recommend that or grill grates? Uh, you need both. Uh, you need the uh, Diamond King smoker box for the heat and the smoke, and you also need the grill grates to kind of get the char and the little uh, marks on your on your ribs. So you, I think you need both. Uh, Eddie Deaton, do you clean your grates with soap and water or burn them off? Uh, I really don't clean my grates with soap and water. I just basically burn them off or I scrub them off because, uh, you know, the patina and, and the uh, residue, they, that's fine. I, I, I don't bother to wash them off. Dustin Rudd, it's very cool when you donate your time to do this. Absolutely, Dustin. You know, I always tell people that it is the DNA within the barbecue community to help, to contribute, and to spread goodwill. That's really what barbecue is really all about. It's not so much just about cooking, winning contests, getting awards, and taking home the big check. It's really about asking yourself the question, right? What body of work do you want to leave behind when you go? And if you have the blessing and the talent to cook barbecue, your role really is to spread that, that knowledge and that energy and tips and tricks everywhere. And that's really what, what it's all about. Okay, Shane says, thank you for taking the time, just hanging out smoking, having a great time. Okay, James, how's the ribs coming? I think the ribs are cooked, so I'm going to see if I can serve the ribs here and then uh, answer a few more questions here and then call it a day here. So make, get the ribs out here. <laughs> All right. Let's see how I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna have to set this down a second here. Let me see if I can do both. All right, I'm perched to my uh, plate here. Okay, I like I like my uh, ribs crunchy. I mean my uh, broccoli not so cooked. All right, so this one here, the uh, grill grate is not hot enough because the, I ran out of fuel because I didn't get a chance to check the, the uh, meat. But that's okay. You guys, you guys get the idea. That's what happens when you try to do too many things all at the same time here. I'm just going to plate the, the, the uh, thing. I'm, I'm going to restart the pit after the broadcast and then uh, go from there here. All right. Set this down. Okay, so we have my pico de gallo, some limes here. I hope you guys can see this. It really looks really good. It smells really good too. <laughs> All right, and then I sprinkle some of my rub on the top. Okay, so there you have it. A little bit of uh, flavored oil. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a little shot here. So here's a pico de gallo and some lime. And you squeeze the lime on the rib before you eat it. And it's super yummy. I'm going to you know, sear the steak a little bit more and then I'm going to plate it. And let me see if I can eat one of these puppies here for you here. Let me pick a good one. Oh man, that looks so good. Oh yeah, okay, this one looks good. All right, let me pick this one here. All right, this is how I show you how, how he's eating, right? So you get some lime on it first okay so we could the guy with jalapeno on it all right okay let me turn the let me turn the camera over and see if i can get a shot of myself eating it here okay so here we go all right i'm going to try to eat it without messing up the uh, the microphone And that's good. <laughs> so, it's smoky, salty, it's got a nice crunch to it. Not like a barbecue rib, but like more like a grilled rib. And I'm going to eat a piece of uh, broccoli with it. Man, that's good stuff. Alright, so there you get it. You have it. 
Um, the rest of it is on my website. So if you go to my website, sabadaddybbq.com, you can uh, go ahead and uh, look for the recipe. Just get in ribs and pico de gallo, and uh, this recipe comes up. Nice and spicy. The rub has a nice kick to it. And the lime really kind of uh, balances the uh, meat. I, uh, it's been great being on Facebook Live, courtesy of Backyard Smokers Barbecue. And uh, hopefully the uh, information I provided was helpful to you. And if you want to see more of me and want to talk some more, I'll, I'll you know, be happy to host more of these sessions. Uh, look out for me in uh, my class. I think I have a class. Uh, where's my next class? Uh, May 6th. May 6th is full, but uh, June, June 24th is open. I try to teach one class a month, one or two classes a month, depending on, on what, what people want. And then I'm going to be in New Mexico uh, around August 25th and uh, Lubbock on August 26th. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, Chicago. Uh, around June 10. So go look out for my recipes uh, and look at my website, www.daddybbq.com. If you want to send me an email, go ahead. It's h-a-r-s-o at yahoo.com. So again, I want to thank Wes and all the crew at Backyard Smokers Barbecue uh, on Facebook for having me on their Facebook Live site. It's been a blast and I uh, want to wish you guys all the best and a happy trails. All right. Thanks a lot. I'm going to hang up. All right.